All right, good afternoon, GS family. All right, great to see everybody again here on this Sneaker Sunday, whether you're comfortable in sneakers or your dress shoes or a suit like uh, Chaplain Claude Nikki. We're just glad that you're here to worship with us. If there's any first or second time visitors, please raise your hand because we have these neat uh, visitor cards we want to make sure that you get. Also, if this is uh, this Sunday or next Sunday is your last Sunday with us here worshiping, please just let us know. Uh, chapel team likes to know that type of stuff. Uh, but other than that, uh, please greet each other with air hugs, air high fives, air daps, whichever one is your favorite. But welcome to the GS family. Good afternoon, GS family. So I'm going to open us up in prayer. Father, we just give you thanks for this time. We thank you for this time of fellowship, Father. Father, we pray that your spirit just begin to enter into this place. Be with us, Father. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for the lives of each and every one that's, that's in this room under the sound of my voice, Father. We thank you, O oh God, that you will give us a daily sustainment. Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus family. So our responsive reading is going to be out of Psalm, and if you would please read along with me. It's in your uh, brochure if you want to open it up, and you can follow along with the reading. In times of trouble, may the Lord answer your cry. May the name of God of Jacob keep you safe from all harm. May we shout for joy when we hear your victory and raise a victory banner in the name of our God. Some nations boast their chariots and horses, but we boast in the name of the Lord our God. Thank you.
Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus at the center of it all Jesus at the center of it all from beginning to the end it will always be has always been you Jesus Jesus and I Nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do. Jesus, you're the center. Thank you. Thank you, worship team. That was awesome. Can we give a hand for the worship team again? I know they don't do this um, for applause or to please any man, but 
it's just really awesome and a blessing to have you guys serve and just ushering God's presence. I really appreciate it. So welcome. Looks like we have a little bit lower, smaller of a crowd today. Maybe the rain scared people away. I don't know. But um, so for announcements, Chaplain Hughes is still in um, quarantine from her close contact. She's doing well. She'll be back next week. We have the, the honor of having uh, Chaplain Claude Nicky preach again this week and bless us with word from God. If you open up your um, bulletin here, uh, you'll see many things. I say it every week. There's many things, many ways to get connected. We want to be your family away from home. This at Inserlik is very much a, a, an assignment where you need to be connected with other believers. You know, we're all part of the body of Christ. Um, we want to know about you. There's comments cards if you are new. Um, these are all ways that Bible studies are ways that you can kind of get involved. Uh, one change on that, the men's Bible study, it listed out as 830. It's been changed to 1900 on Tuesday night, um, still here in the chapel. And then the women's Bible study is still at 1830 here in the chapel as well. So if you don't see something that you want on here, like you need something else, please reach out to the, the chapel leadership, Chaplain uh, Claude Nicky, Chaplain Hughes. Um, for instance, you know, the officer fellowship, there's not an enlisted fellowship. You might be getting uh, called to maybe start up an enlisted fellowship. That would be awesome. Uh, so with that, there's no, um, so every first and third Sunday, we usually have volunteer training. So if you're interested in being part of our, our team, um, we need your help, um, especially as the singers and musicians. As you can see, each Sunday, um, from month to month with PCSs happening and stuff, we go from plussed up on singers to no singers. So um, especially if someone's sick or out or has other stuff to do, we would love to grow our pool of singers. So if that's really speaking to you and you have a good voice or maybe even not so good voice, they can make you sound good, um, please reach out. But uh, other ways, Usher, if you have a heart to um, of just hospitality, we, we have greeters, we have ushers, we have plate plasters. I mean, there's a multitude of ways that you can uh, serve in the, in the congregation here. And so um, usually that training for volunteers, if you're new to that, is every first and third Sunday. This week it's, it's postponed, so the next one will be on the 7th of February. With that being said, the 7th of February, first Sunday of February, is our first Sunday fellowship um, gathering after service. Uh, every month on the first Sunday, we have a fellowship gathering where there's plenty of food and we just sit around and fellowship. It's awesome time. You probably saw on the back table, there's a sign-up sheet. Um, you don't, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to, if you, if you see something on there or you want to bring something else, Chaplain Hughes says, just cross off whatever. She just kind of puts suggestions down there on what might be needed. So um, go ahead and sign up if you, if you want to bring something to that. And that is about it. Have a great day, guys. Good afternoon, family. Oh, man, y'all know how we do. Good afternoon, family. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. That's a little better. That's a little better. I know we're tired because of the rain, but that's all right. So we, it, it's offering time. Uh, this is the time of the service where everybody can participate. Uh, we will take up a physical offering, but there's also a QR code in the program if you'd like to give online. Okay, so let's go before the Lord in prayer. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for just being able to show into your house one more time amongst our family and our friends, God. We ask as we get ready to take up this offering that you just bless it. Bless the hands that are giving. Bless those who have a heart to give but don't have to give, God. And bless those who are choosing not to give, God, that they might be uh, willing and able to give next time. God, let us give with cheerful heart and out of desire, not out of obligation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
I think the mic's on. And I have to tell you, I, I totally spaced it that it was like the sneaker day thing. I was getting dressed. My wife's like, you gonna wear your suit today? I'm like, I've never worn my suit because it's like hot. And she goes, no, you brought it. You should wear it. I'm like, okay. So I wore it. And then I get here. I'm like, oh, it's the sneaker thing. Uh, so I apologize. Uh, it's not because I'm trying to do opposite of what you guys are doing. I just totally spaced it. Um, thank you again, team. I love just all the instruments we have up there, uh, and all the talent. Um, has God been working in your lives? Has he been doing that? He's been doing it in mine. And uh, well, that, I think we all hope that. But I mean, sometimes you notice it uh, more than other times. And, uh, and as, I was, as I was preparing, uh, the way I prepare is, is uh, sometimes I can have a, I'll do a lectionary type thing where I'll actually 
kind of go through a, a series or something like that. Uh, but this one, I kept preparing something, and it just, it just wasn't fitting right. And so I'm like, okay. So I finally, um, well, in John, I don't know if you knew this, but it's, you know the number seven is significant in Scripture sometimes. It means complete in some of the, the Hebrew-isms. Uh, but in John, Jesus says, I am dot, 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 seven times. I mean, he says it more than that, but he says seven distinct different things that he is. And, and just knowing what those things mean and who he is is sometimes just enough to get us through. Uh, for example, it is important we know what things mean. Actually, last night, I was talking to a friend of mine uh, back in, he's in California, so I guess it was, more, I don't know, it was morning for him. And uh, we were in the car, oh, he was in the car talking to me on speakerphone, but his like six-year-old son was next to him, and he talked about the widow in their neighborhood. Yeah, she's a widow, and, and his son goes, no, she's not. And he wasn't even part of the conversation, but it's in the car. And so he's like, no, she's not. And he goes, yeah, yeah. I think his name, son's name is William. He goes, yes, his, his name, but she is a widow. Oh. So I'm hearing this, and I go, I bet he doesn't know what widow. I go, ask him what widow means, you know, six-year-old. What does widow mean? And he goes, yeah, what does widow mean? And he goes, well, it's a spider. And he, goes, <laughs> he just starts laughing. He's like, no. Okay, yes, it's a spider. But it means, you know, obviously that her husband has died and a widower is that. And he goes, Okay, so I'm thinking this poor kid for the first six years of his life is at church. You know where I'm going, thinks, you know, God, you know, Jesus is pray over the widows, you know, and care for the widows. So I don't know what this kid was thinking. And so it's just, you know, just the, the innocence of youth. But it added, I thought I'm going to share that today because it does go into some of the things. We sometimes just say things and, and we, we don't really know what it means or what the impact can even be deeper than what we think it means. For example, one of the seven things, I'm, I can do them in order, but I'll just jump at this one right here. When we say that, when Jesus said in John 8, I am the light of the world. All right, he said this back in the first century, right? There's no electricity. What kind of light could he even be referring to? Right, there's no spotlight, there's no fluorescent light, there's no flashlight, uh, you know, whatever, skylight, there's none of that doesn't even exist. I mean, he knows it exists, but they don't, and they're the ones he's speaking to. They had candles, the light of the sun, reflection of the moon off the sun, if they understood that, right? That, that's fire, other kinds of fire. I think that's about it. And Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Now, I'm going to say the next phrase twice, okay? Because of the light, we can see everything else. Let me repeat that. This is just a natural thing of science, right? Because of the light, we can see everything else. So the first thing, when Jesus said, I am the light of the world, it goes so much more. I hope we, we're not like that six-year-old. I mean, we are at times. And, oh, a widow, it's a spider. You know, there's more to it. There's a deeper meaning. And, and, and that can mean so much to you. There's people who you say, you're the light of my life. What do you mean when you're telling someone that? Right? You're saying... It could be a number of things, but it could be you, you, just, you just make me happy. Maybe it's that child. Maybe you have that one niece or nephew or neighbor kid or some kid you always see. And when you see him, you go, you're the light. Of, they just brighten the room when they walk in. Jesus is that light. Every time. When Je if Jesus were to, if enters the room, right, he lights. If he enters your life, he will light it up and you will see things clearly. They may be scary, what you see, but we'll also see again the strength and protection he gives us. He says in John 6, this is all in John, he says in John 6, I am the bread of life. Are we feasting upon the words of Christ or are we in spiritual anorexia? You know, we, are we eating lots of spiritual carbs or are we, do we have enough protein in our diet? Now, carbs are good, right? They give us that little bolts of energy. That's maybe that time when you're just feeling it. You hear that song, and you, man, you get that little carbs of spirituality. Man, oh, I'm good. And you get that energy right there. But if he's also that bread of life, are you feasting upon his words? Are you eating the protein he has to offer? The things that'll build muscle, 
that will strengthen you, that will be the foundational element of who you are. Now, we know he's the bread, and to them the bread was the staple of life. Okay, and there's all those other symbolisms, and there's so many more than, than I'm going to share. But are you, as he says, I am the bread of life, he's inviting us as he identifies who he is to us. I'm the bread. I'm the light. We all know he's Jesus. We all know he's the Messiah. We all know he is Christ. He's the Redeemer. He's our Savior. We know that. But then he said, I, I got to make it a little bit more to just to bring it home. And it does for me. I, I mean, in John 10, he says, I am the door. Right? And you've always seen that, you've seen the traditional picture of Christ at the door, and Jesus at the door, and what's missing on the door? You seen it? You noticed it? You heard it in a Sunday school lesson? The handle. Next time you see Jesus at a door picture, there's no handle. You've got to open it from the inside. That's what the artist was intending, is you need to invite Christ into your life. He's right there waiting, right? But he said he's the door. But this also figuratively means it's an entrance, if he's the door. We know he's waiting at the door, but he is the door. John 10, 7 and 9, he says, I am the door. All right? He's the door for a couple things. Let me just cover one or two. He's the door for forgiveness. In Hebrews 8, 12, he says, For I will be merciful to the unrighteousness, and their sins and their inequity, iniquities I will remember no more. Jesus did not say, I'll forget what you did, right? Because forget almost shows weakness, right? Shows, ah, oh, I forgot. Kind of like how I forgot not to wear my sneakers and sweatpants and stuff. He doesn't say that. He says, I love this, I will remember them no more. That's an act. That means he has to physically say and force, force himself, you know what I mean, in the way that God will. He will not remember them. That is his choice. Not forget them because they happened so long ago. Or forget them because they weren't important. He is choosing not to remember what? Our unrighteousness and our sins and our iniquities. He will remember them no more. He promises us that. He'll be merciful. More merciful than I think we give, him, we give God credit. We don't. I, I've, I've heard people saying, even in my life at certain times... I'm like, well, God can't forgive that. I mean, I know he can, but in my heart, I really feel, man, I really messed up. And it's going to take a lot to get back to God. And God's going to be like, a lot's already been done. Come on back. But for some reason, we want to punish ourselves sometimes. We feel, okay, okay, Jesus, I know you suffered for me, but I need to suffer a little for me too. You don't need to. Guaranteed, the world will let you suffer. All right, you do something wrong, the law will make you suffer. People will make you suffer. Don't do it to yourself. God won't. God's already done that. He's ready to bring you home. He is that door. He's also the door to heaven, the door to holiness, the door to peace. I love this stuff in John. I mean, just, I, and he was, and remember, John was written mainly for people who are already believers. He, John's preaching to the church. He's not, he's not, that's who it was written to. These are people who have already accepted Christ. Matthew is kind of written for the Jewish background. Luke was written for the Greeks. Mark was for the Romans. Okay, and you go through that and you can read about these. It's, they're different approaches. That's why the stories are similar, but just written a little differently. Like, for example, a little side note, you know, Mark tells his stories in like 10 little elements and then a bam at the end. Why? Because that's how the Romans wrote. That's how they wrote all of their odysseys and all of their Roman heroic stories. Boom, 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 bam. And so he does that throughout. If you, it's kind of cool. And so they wrote him. He wrote him differently. But not John. John is writing to you and me who already believe. He doesn't need to go over the superficial who Jesus is. He goes, let me tell you who he is. And, and he, well, Jesus is recorded in here this way. He's the door. Then he says in John 10, 11 and 14, also the same chapter, I am the good shepherd. Right? And you, we, could, we could spend a whole afternoon on what shepherds are and how that's like Christ. So let me just take a couple. A shepherd will lead the flock, feed them, and protect them. Is Jesus, and do you know how a shepherd leads? He will, he'll walk out in front 
make some sound to call them, and they follow. He's not like, he's not beating them. That's a, that's like a herder, you know. There's a difference. This is the shepherd. He walks forward, calls, and his sheep follow. Are you following when Christ calls you? When Jesus calls you to do something. We even had the invitation up here. If you feel so called to have a certain type of Bible study or, and just understand, we don't have officer one because we didn't want enlisted. There was already a Bible study going on. We brought them into here and said, guys, if you want, we can supply you with materials. That's why there's an officer study. They were already an officer study. So I just wanted to clarify that. It's not because we don't like enlisted. But seriously, if you, want, if you feel called to do something, are you doing it? How many times? Oh, I'm not going to give him a number, but Jesus will call you, and he'll continue to call you until you just ignore him or you choose not to listen. And that's okay. Because when you choose to, he'll remember that turning away from him no more. He's not going to hold it against you. He's not going to bring it up. Remember, you know, I, no, I don't remember. I choose not to remember those things. Okay? He feeds us. He'll feed us with his word, right? Are you feasting upon these words? He told us he was the bread. Are you feasting upon these things? Are you snacking? Snacking's okay. A buffet is okay. But a feast is when you sit down, you're prepared, you're ready to eat, you see how beautiful it is, you appreciate it, you savor every morsel. And sometimes at a feast, what else is there? There's people, huh? People don't often feast alone. Are you getting into the word and letting God feed you with others? It's not you or me. I'm not feeding you right now. God is feeding you. And do you sit down when you say, I'm going to go feast? Do you say, hey, come, come, you want to read the Bible with me today? Or let's, let's talk about this scripture story. Or let's talk about something that's been weighing heavy on my heart that God did in my life. Let me share that with you. Okay? He is the good shepherd. He will lead us. He will feed us. And he protects us. What does he protect us from? What is a sheep? What is an enemy to sheep? <laughs> Go ahead, yell it out. What do you got? The wolf, right? I know someone said it. Can't see with the mask. Yeah, it's the wolves. And weather. And scarcity. Right? He, a shepherd has, we always think the wolves, yeah, the wolves are out there, and he will protect you. We hear in Isaiah and in multiple other places, fear not, I am with you. And so, and he repeats that over and over and over again. But he also protects you from scarcity. The shepherd's got to go find that green pasture that we see in Psalm 23. Also, he has to protect you from yourself sometimes. Right? From wandering off, like we do. And you might wander off in the week and then come back here and get back on course. Then you wander off again. He's a shepherd. He knows. He knows us. I, I really don't think Jesus ever rolls his eyes. I hope. Not. Well, he may. Because he's <laughs> maybe, maybe, you know, with you. He'll look at you, roll your eyes. You'll laugh, hug. Kind of like a, as a good friend would. But he's that shepherd. He's going to protect you from all those things. Why do we not... Invite him more into our lives? I don't know. We each have our own reasons. Could be just we don't know how. Or it could be we're just exhausted. Or we're tired. Or we don't trust God anymore. All right? He's that good shepherd. You want protection. You want feeding. You want to be led. He says he's the good shepherd. And he uses the word good. Are there bad shepherds? I, I think if he says he's the good shepherd probably implies that there are bad people that can lead you. And you know this. Not, nothing I'm telling you is new. But if you have friends or colleagues or people at work or home or online or wherever that are leading you to do things that are not pleasing to God, that are disappointing to God, you know, th then don't do those things. Separate those people from your life. If you have to unfriend them, it's okay. If you have to block them. And they're like, well, why'd you block me? It's like, because you don't lead me to Jesus. I mean, be bold about it. And they were like, what? And you're like, yeah. I, I guarantee you they won't argue with you. They're not going to go, come on. You don't have to go by Jesus all the time. I mean, if you're really in a conversation like that, record it, because I want to hear it. Because I think you're just going to get bold, and, and it's going to be beautiful. Okay, so he is that good shepherd. John eleven twenty five. 25. I am the resurrection. He is your, he is your way to immortality. When you and I die, 
We're not coming back unless it's for Jesus. Not for him, but because of him. We will all be resurrected. What does that look like? I don't know. But Jesus was resurrected. And he didn't resurrect Lazarus, though. He brought him back. So Lazarus had to die again. <laughs> but he probably wasn't as scared the next time around. But he is your key. He is my key to that. In Ezekiel 37, 13, he says, And ye shall know that I am the Lord, when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. It does not get more black and white than that. Very clear. I brought you, you shall know who I am, basically, when I have opened your graves and brought you up out of your graves. And it's not a zombie thing. All right? The world and people who aren't of God have really tried to turn this whole idea of coming back after dead into a very grotesque, horrifying thing. There's no real zombies. People believe in zombies more than they do Christ. And that's sad. People are getting ready for the zombie apocalypse. Well, how about you get ready for the second coming? Huh? How about that? I'll guarantee you, everybody who comes back from the dead will not look like a zombie. They're going to be glorified of God. And it's going to be beautiful. I don't know how I know that, but I, just by reading the scriptures, it, that's how it is. Okay? They're not, there's no zombies. I said I have to say that. But you talk to people, they get ready. They think people can come back. They can. Only through Christ. He is, he says, I am the resurrection and life. There's nobody else. It's not happening. Then John, the famous one, right? John 14, 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. We could spend a whole afternoon on those three things. And what's beautiful, I like in the Greek, hodos is the word for uh, way, I'm the way, path, or road. And that means journey. He doesn't just say, I'm the way, like, direction. Jesus is the direction to go. No, it's more than that. If you read the Greek, I am the journey. He is the entire trip. And he's the truth and the life. He is that's, he's the journey. Think about that. Chew on that today. When you say, am I following Jesus? Okay, are you following him? That's great. But are you, on, are you on his journey? He is the journey. Are you on a journey with Christ back to God? And if you're not, or if something's in your life that's taken away from that, bring Christ into that, and he will help the whole package turn and, and be with him. It's doable. It's real. Uh, this isn't just lip service for God. It works. And the peace comes. The last one. He says in John 15, 1, I am the true vine. This is the one where I'll kind of wrap it up here. He said, he is the true vine. Now a vine, you could take a, like the vines in the back of Wrigley Field, you know, it's all the clover, or, or you take a, a vine of some other plant, you can imagine. The vine supplies things, supplies it with nutrients. Right? It supplies it with life-giving substance. Everything that goes into any kind of thing at the end of the vine, they get mainly through the vine. Gives it stability. Gives it identity. All of these things. I, the way I kind of read it once was, he is the vein of life. Vein, v, like, like this one. V-E-I-N. All you medical people. I have good veins, by the way. That's what nurses tell me. They go, oh, you got a good vein. I'm just popping it up. He is that vein of all life. He is the one, the artery, the vein, that whole thing, right, where all of it's coming through. He's the nucleus of every branch, and we depend upon him for our sustenance and guidance in everything. It's interesting he would say that. I'm the true vine. So we don't talk about that one much, but he did. There's a lot there. Is he your vine? If someone looks to you, where do you get your strength? Where do you get your happiness? Where do you get your energy every day? Are you bold? And do you say, I get it from my Lord, Jesus Christ. That's who I get it from. If they ask you, you can say, or you can say, from my energy drink. And this, this chocolate Hershey bar, or whatever. Or do you say, or is it from Christ? And then you say, I dare you to. You know, it's like, oh, we're not supposed to talk about religion at work. It's, oh, no, we're not. You're not supposed to proselyte. You're not. But if someone asks you, what'd you do over the weekend? You had a four-day weekend, right? Do you say, did this, this, or do you go, man, went to church? 
I sang about Jesus, read his word for about an hour that day by myself. And they're going to go, yeah, but what else did you do? Well, I also did these other things. But what if you always answered with Christ first? That's not proselyting. That's being honest about what you did. Don't be afraid of it. Own it. If he's that part of your life, and if he's not, I pray that he will be. Because it'll bring you peace and power and, and happiness more than what you have right now. The sorrows won't go away. The hard times won't go away. The trials won't go away. But the peace through those events come through Christ, and they're always there. And you can do it. I know you can. And I know uh, today I don't want to end without um, just taking a moment to celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who we are celebrating this weekend. I think, is it the community center? At 2 it starts? It's like 2 to 5 or something like that? Is it? They, I'm not sure. I have it in my other notes. Um, they have some kind of presentation and a neat setup for that. So I'd invite you to go over there and, and uh, kind of celebrate with that as well. Uh, I was at Maxwell Air Force Base before here and got to go to the church, one of the churches, because he preached in a lot of churches. One of the churches where he preached, uh, the church where Rosa Parks went uh, at the, that road. Have you ever driven on that road from Selma? Have you ever, have you ever seen the movie? Okay, you know where the, they, they marched and all that? That's a, that's a long road. <laughs> it's long. All right? And these people, not just for freedom and for righteousness and for equality and everything else, they had a strong faith in God. And that strength gave them the, the additional strength to do everything they did that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. did. He had a testimony of Jesus. And it was a part of his life. And I hope that we don't let this weekend go by and just make it be a four-day weekend, but really take some time to study his life. Study some of his words. Um, is it the writings from Birmingham Jail? Is that one of his? Amazing. All right, there's so many quotes you could put on a poster and put up in your house and that. Read it. I believe it, that's what it's called. Um, if not, I can look it up and I'll get it for you next time. But it's, it's beautiful and it's, it's very well done. Thank you for being here to worship with us today. And uh, I love each one of you. And I'm grateful. For, I'm not grateful Chaplain Hughes is sick. Not at all. Uh, but I am grateful for the opportunity to share my testimony of Jesus with you and, and, and be here with you today. Let's close in a, in a benediction. And then we'll, uh, yeah, it's a little early, but we're okay. Almighty God, thank you, Jesus, for being everything for us. For being the vine, the door, the bread, the light. And everything else that the scriptures teach us of you. We pray that we will not forget these things. That we will be bold as you were bold. That we will not be ashamed to let others know that you're a part of our lives. If not, what we would have be our whole life. Bless those here today who are struggling with trials whatever they might be, whether they're personal, external, or just the world. Bless our families back in the States and our loved ones and our friends with safety, that they can find peace from disease, infection, from the contentions that are going on. We pray for safety on this base, that we can do the things we've been sent here to do and to stay safe and return home with honor. And these things we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Have a wonderful day.